Hello everybody and welcome to today's ecology lecture. This is the second part of ecology for freshmen and here we're going to talk more in detail about ecosystem and the processes going on within it. In the first two hours or so we were talking with more general ideas of the ecology, what it works on, how it, go, how it all organized and so on. Today we're going to work more in details going towards the, the all the processes. So this part is dedicated to ecosystem as in the introduction we're going to talk about concepts, components and processes within it. My name is Divna. So as a first slide we're just going to recapitulate the, what we learned so far about the ecosystem in the, in the first few presentations. So it said that the ecosystem is a complex of living and non-living creatures and the interactions within it. So it will be something like a combination of uh, living organisms, the dead organic matter produced by them, and biotic environment within which the organisms live and exchange the elements, so soil, water and atmosphere, and the interactions uh, between these components. Ecosystem can be treated as the ultimate level of organization to be investigated in, in the part of the ecology science but their boundaries its boundaries are not really well defined it's really flexible as so as it is um bad side of it this actually the flexibility it has in that way uh, has made it such a useful and an endangering concept to to work on so as a noun of the ecosystem it has many other approaches how the ecosystem could be considered so it could be it's called ecosystem approach which are the guidelines uh, internationally agreed it means it, it means obviously that the treating of certain ecosystems are of a vast importance for this planet and and life of uh, all biosphere and of humans as well within it then there are some important facts like ecosystem diversity and ecosystem services which would be all the goods we get from the ecosystem, which is the good approach to study and to value the ecosystem in this era of, of capitalism. So the, the ecosystem as a noun is a really important one in this 21st century as environmental protection and, and onwards. So there are many different ways how to, how to approach the research of ecosystem. So for the beginning, there are two general types of ecosystem. Of course, there are aquatic and terrestrial. All of them have many under levels. So, for example, aquatic can be marine or freshwater and lake, river, blah blah, so on. And then the other hand, terrestrial could be forest, and littoral, and then in the desert and on onwards. What this is important for is it's important for the structure of it and how to approach it is no matter of conservation. So each ecosystem has its different conditions and different parts, but there are some exclusive parts that are necessary for anything to be determined as an ecosystem. Ecosystems are really, as I mentioned before, variable in the, in the matter of scales and areas defined by it. So it could be from one um, plant and its surrounding to the whole biosphere. Anything can be considered as the ecosystem, but the, the ones we usually talk about are somewhere in between in size. But what shapes an ecosystem is four basic elements. Considering those four basic elements, you can have the um, complete ecosystems like these showed in the picture, and you have incomplete ecosystem like this abyssal zone, uh, which it's under the area where light can approach. So what they lack is primer producers. We're going to talk about it later, but these species, as you can see, are lacking colors. Usually they have these well-adapted light uh, pulsing organs to attract species they're feeding on. What happens here is that you can only have uh, heterotrophs. So this would be an incomplete ecosystem, which means that you're lacking some of the crucial elements. And when I said crucial elements, it's one of these three, biotic, abiotic substances and an energy. You remember biotic and abiotic, we talked about it earlier. And energy is something that is fluctuating within, within these systems. So under biotic, we could call them functional groups. So you have 
the three main ones, producers, consumers, and the composers, every complete ecosystem have, has all three of these, plus the energy and abiotic substances like elements. Incomplete one we mentioned before, as I said, was lacking the primary producers. So those are plants or anything that can source uh, energy from the sun and put it in the uh, building blocks of living creatures. So as you have these two mentioned before, bi bi biota and abiota, so biota would be functional groups, producers, consumers, or decomposers. In a matter of abiota, you have energy and elements. On one side, earth is an, let's call it an ecosystem, is an open system in respect to energy, but it's closed in respect to to elements. What this means? It means that, as you already know, probably, energy cannot be destroyed. It can only change shapes. So, what happens here is that energy is lost. It changes shapes and escapes this system. So, if you have an um, example, sun energy, like a photon caught by a um, pigment in plant, turn into the CO2 the or oxygen, dependent what what part you're looking at, but anyway, it's a uh, to put at a building blocks of of the matter and and further through the system. Uh, when what happens is that when it's processed by by not primary producers, this new uh, building block, uh, some part of it escapes the system in in the shape of of uh, temperature. So some parts of of uh, energy is constantly lost in the process of a food chain, and this means that it's open source losing energy which means it needs constant input of energy to for system to function the way we know it so this means that without a sun basically the this earth as a living system would not uh, survive on the other hand in on the earth there is a this certain number of all the known elements if we exclude the uh, meteoric showers now and then, but let's say the the general level of all the available elements on Earth is a closed system. The number is fixed. So what happens is that system is uh, those elements are cycling and the uh, uh, Earth is recycling those through the food chain and those trophic levels, we're going to talk about it later. But it's important to remember that uh, in respect to energy there is this open system and in respect to elements the earth is closed system. There is something that also that is called functional aspect of the ecosystem and functional aspect includes such things as the amount of energy that is produced by photosynthesis, how energy or materials flow along many steps in food chain or what controls the rate of decomposition of materials or the rate of which nutrients are recycled in the system. This is how it looks like. So energy flows and, and material cycle. As I mentioned, oh, some parts of the energy are being lost through the heat. On the other hand, you have a solar energy that is constantly inputting energy in the cycle of, of our life on Earth, which of course primary producers are directly responsible for uh, transferring energy into matter and then through the cycle of food chains and trophic levels m matter change shapes and energy gets lost. To explain uh, trophic levels, trophic level depends on, on a function you have in the system of earth. It doesn't really matter what group of organism you are, what connects a group of uh, trophic level similar Organisms are only the function they do. So decomposers would be like um, fungi or bacteria. They're the same trophic level. On the other hand, you have producers to be the same trophic level like plants or maybe autotrophic bacteria. In the matter of matter, you have trophic levels, which I just explained. You have food webs, which probably know what they are. They are all food chains all combined in this really complex connected web explaining how the uh, matter and energy flows through the dependent ecosystem or earth depend what what level of organization you take 
but so the food chain is something linear how the the matter goes directly from a producer to decomposer over users and then the food webs connects all the food chains in in a given area that's how we treat the matter and the, in the matter of flow but then you have cycle of the materials which would be uh, water and hydrogen and oxygen and so on these all will be mentioned all of these five seven sorry will be mentioned uh, in, in the next presentations in more detail but uh, what's important to remember these are cycles of the materials that are amount of it is strictly defined on earth and then you have these levels of, of energy flow which uh, really depends on the input of sun energy sent to to earth that is all for today thanks for listening uh, talk to you in the next presentation